So the first thing that we need to do in Matillion ETL, we need to create a project group and give it a project name. So it's called mine at default and the project name demo. I'm going to uncheck the box to include samples because we don't need those. And I'm going to click next. Then we've got a AWS connection um, that we need to provide. I'm running this on an EC2 instance within AWS. I'm just going to call this AWS for now for the environment name for this demo. Click next. Next, I need to connect it to my Snowflake account, which is running beneath this. To do that, I'm going to grab my URL and I'm going to paste the whole thing in here. Now, note, it does give you a handy little tip that not every application gives you, um, where it tells you that the account is the first part between HTTPS and snowflakecomputing.com. So it gives you good little tip there so we get rid of these bits that leaves our account name for snowflake next I'm gonna give it my username for snowflake and password and I'm gonna click next I'm gonna leave all of the snowflake defaults blank and I'm gonna click finish so now we've got our project default over here I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna add an orchestration job. The first thing we need to do is to give it a name. I'm going to call it Data Warehouse Orchestration. It will ask you if you want to switch to the new job now. I'm going to click yes. So the first thing that we need to do, we need to add some components onto this canvas and attach them to our start container here. We need to connect to an RDS database to get our source data initially to start to stage our airports data. So I'm just typing in RDS in the components tab down here and I'm looking for RDS query and I'm going to drag that onto the pane and I'm going to connect it up to my start. Now there's lots of parameters down here that we need to complete the values for next. The first thing that we need to do that we need to give it a useful name and I'm going to call it stage airports notice that's pretty helpful in terms of telling you where you need a value or input required so it, it is pretty intuitive from a UI perspective as well so next I'm going to change the database type you can see it's defaulted to Postgres SQL I'm going to click in here I need to use MySQL and I'm going to click OK Next, I need to configure my RDS endpoint. So I'm going to click here and I'm going to paste in my RDS endpoint name. Click OK. Now we need a database name. My database in this instance is called training. My username is source user. I'm going to add my password in here. And I'm going to say store in component, not in the password manager. So this will just store it within this job itself. So I've got my password in there now. I'm going to specify a JDBC option. Now notice this appears blank initially. What you have to do to add a parameter in here. And this is what you're effectively passing through on the connection at runtime. So click the plus. In here I need to add a parameter called use SSL. And I want that set to false. That's the only one that we need. And we're going to click OK here. I also need to add some SQL, a SQL command that I'm going to run against that RDS database. So I'm going to go into here and I'm going to paste this SQL command, which selects a few columns from training underscore RDS underscore airports. I can actually run that, click sample. You can see I'm getting data coming back, looks all good. Click OK there. OK. So now we need to specify a target table. So we'll go into here and we're going to call it training underscore airports. Click OK. And that's naming our destination table or target table. Next, we need to click on our S3 staging area here. And I've selected my S3 staging area 
with a bucket and folder in there that I created a little bit earlier. I've just given it public access as well. So if you want to do the same, sign up for an AWS free tier account and create an S3 bucket and make sure that you allow all public access to that. And for the purposes of this demo, that will be absolutely fine. So I'm going to click OK here. Next, I've got to head over to my Snowflake account and create a new database called training and click finish. So now everything's configured. We don't have anything outstanding. We're going to right click on the canvas next and we're going to actually run the job. So I'm also setting a warehouse. I'm going to call it Matillion. I'm going to set a database. Now you may need to log out of Matillion and log back in because after creating that database, I didn't actually see it in my list. After logging back in, I do now see it there. So I'm going to pick training and click OK. So we've told Matillion where to place our target table. And we've given it the warehouse name. We've given it the database name. I'm going to leave the schema as the invariable default. I didn't put anything in there. I just want to see what happens. And then we give it a target table name as well. So I'm going to run this job by right clicking on the canvas and clicking run job. Now I did get an error when I tried to run that previously. Let me just show you what it said. SQL compilation error object does not exist or operation cannot be performed. If you get that error, what I did to resolve that was define a schema. I wanted to see what happened if I left it as environment default. And because I didn't specify any default in the project setup, as you saw, I needed to actually define a schema that I wanted to use. So I've picked public. I've run that job. You can see now the row count 3,372. If I go into the job and click here, if I click on the C task info, I can actually go into the task itself and see the various stages and it tells me the start and end time, how long it was queued for and any row counts associated with that job as well. If I go back in to Snowflake and let's just take a look at what's happened here. So training, public schema, I've got my training airport and you can see I've got 3,372 records in there. So that's great. So we've been able to take the data from the RDS database. We've got some airport data in there. We've been able to bring it in to Matillion. That's staged the data via Amazon S3 on its way in. Now, similar to DBT, where we're able to write queries within the DBT UI and actually get those results back from Snowflake. We don't actually need to flick to Snowflake to see that. We can come over to the left hand side here, minimize the components, open environments and expand this down. OK, so what I've noticed is um, when I've expanded environments, it's shown me my schemas, but they're all listed, as you can see without the database name because at the environment level I haven't specified default when I set up my project folder. So it's hanging like this at the moment and if I go into the history tab in Snowflake I can see the query that it's ran as well as the error message that I'm getting on the Snowflake side and basically the error I'm getting is because it doesn't have a current database and it's, it's stating I need to use a database um, to allow this to work which kind of makes sense now I've seen the error message that I, I'm going to have to specify a, um, a default database as part of the environment setup so what I'm going to do I'm going to click on my project here and I'm going to go here and I'm going to go add environment I'm going to give it a, a new name now I'm going to call it AWS version 2 click next and then I'm going to grab again my URL for my snowflake account as I did before paste that in, get rid of the stuff that we don't need, like that, and like that. For the password, there was the one for my demo, AWS, I'm going to go back to here. So I'm going to pick my role. I was going to pick sysadmin for the purposes of this demo, I'll pick Matillion for the warehouse. For a database, there's my training database. 
I'll find schema public. Test that. I've got a success. I'm going to click finish on there. Now when I click right clicking on the canvas, I can select run job in another environment. Now I've got two different versions. Here's my new one. So I'm going to run it here and we've loaded our records in there. Now I'm going to close up my AWS environment here and open my AWS V2. Now you can see I've just got the one schema showing, the one I've defined in my environment. If I expand that down, I can see tables and views and I can see my table here, training airports. So that is the first stage done. We've set up a project folder. We've connected to an RDS database completed all the information that we needed to connect as well as the source SQL query. We've then specified a target table as well as our S3 bucket that we're using as a staging area to get the data into Snowflake. Then we went back and added another environment so we could ensure that we're specifying the right warehouse database and schema name. So we're using the, the right ones. I could actually go back in here now and change this to environment default and it, it wouldn't try to override everything then. Uh, runtime, if I pick all of those, I can then go run, run job in another environment, pick the new environment set up and click OK, and that will run successfully. And that's everything. That's the first stage of this uh, Matillion kind of walkthrough I'm giving you. Set up a project, staging some data from a source RDS database via AWS S3 into Snowflake and creating our target table and populating with data. In our next video, we'll import a job from a JSON file, so a Matillion job that's saved down as a JSON file. We'll import that in. That gives us the components needed to create three new tables in Snowflake. But for now, that's it for this lesson. Keep watching, keep subscribing. New videos coming soon. I also wanted to let you know about our Master and Snowflake program of myself that we run and it's, it's an exclusive signature program to help you master Snowflake and learn how to design, implement and scale solutions in the cloud. And I've designed this program specifically for those people who have either scratched the surface using Snowflake or who are stuck working with legacy on-premise technologies and haven't been invested in by their companies and have fallen behind in their career. And what I've done is packaged up my knowledge and experience of working with Snowflake since 2017 and learning how to package up Snowflake's out-of-the-box capabilities in a way where you can apply them in the real world to address common challenges. So this program isn't about theory. Of course, I need to introduce you to the concepts if you're new to Snowflake, and many of my members are, but it's really about introducing the theory and then in practice how you apply those in the real world. I've been through the pain of understanding what works and what doesn't. Now I've got a formula or a set of recipes, if you like, that show you how to do that. So the Master and Snowflake program includes in-depth, on-demand video course content that I've created that all include practical hands-on demos. I provide access to all the code, templates, and files that I use as part of those demos. So you can download them and use them freely. You may want to use them in your day-to-day -day work. You may want to take them and customize them and use them as a starting point. All members on the program get exclusive access to a members-only group where everybody can help each other out and share their knowledge and best practice and get expert advice. Finally, I also carry out a group 60-minute coaching call with all the members, totally optional, where you can ask me anything about Snowflake, data analytics, data strategy, data architecture, you name it, um, interview advice, and I can help you and give my um, input and help and support and guidance around that. Finally, you'll get lifetime access to all future updates. Snowflake's changing and evolving. There's new features and releases every week, and you'll continue to benefit from those updates as well. At a high level, there's 10 modules. This is what we cover, everything ranging from the Snowflake architecture to getting data into Snowflake. And then once you've got data, how do you effectively use it, secure it, share it, and work with it to ensure that you get the maximum value from your Snowflake implementation. If you're interested, I've included the application link in the video description below. If this sounds like the thing that you're looking for and you want to supercharge your career, and if you're ready to take the ultimate step, I'd really encourage you to fill out the application form below.